Hey, welcome back to the Life of Freedom podcast. This podcast accompanies my YouTube channel, which goes by the same name of Life of Freedom. And my goal with these podcast episodes is to open up your mind, to give you access to new ways of thinking, to new mindsets. And in general, I would say, to give you also tactical ways you can level up your life. So we can do that sometimes, I think, in terms of living more freely, in terms of abundance and living with positive emotions and really canceling out negativity in our life. That is so important. But in addition, I am not just all woo-woo. I'm not just all in the clouds. I also think there is a practical science step-by-step process between behind living life with a little bit more freedom. And unfortunately, we live in the 21st century. You know, we, we got to obviously pay money in order to have services and products. And um, even the microphone I'm talking on right now, at one point I had to buy this. Someone else had to make it. We live in a system that enables us to be able to buy things and to get at the things every day that we need. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, the less money that you got, the less income that you make, the less free you are. When you don't have money, when you don't have resources, when you don't have income streams that are independent of other things like time, for example, um, you unfortunately have to be holding to a boss. You got to have a boss that you maybe don't like, maybe a job you're not so happy about, a type of work environment that makes you frustrated or makes you feel bad about yourself. We don't have as much freedom in life when we don't have as much income that is possible. I think, honestly, that we deserve. You deserve the best things in life. You you deserve to be able to take out your family for dinner, to buy your mom or your dad a car, to go on vacations and travel. I think that you deserve these things, and I know that you've been working hard in your life to to be able to achieve some stuff. So what I want to share with you today actually is a tangible way, a tangible example that a couple out there, Dan and Lindsay, was able to achieve and to follow their dreams. They were able to actually live a life of freedom. They're embodying this message, this message, which is like really cool to me. Um, so they basically, for a living, they travel from place to place. They work virtually. Um, they also have a blog and a website and sell online courses. Um, they also have written a book. So they, they do all the things that I do basically. Um, and they've been able to incorporate a lot of travel into their lifestyle. And now they're growing as a couple. And they took an event, which could, I think, cripple a lot of people out there and they were able to turn this into a detour i would actually say they they turned a detour into sort of like this new inspiration in which they live life by so it's really cool um i think you're gonna like today's story a lot because it's just they're so freaking relatable if 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 you know what that means um like they're just I can see uh, their faces, you know, across the internet, across the world, where people like them, who are ordinary people, who come from a a small town, um, who don't have necessarily lots of education about the online stuff, but have gone to school for a traditional career path, a nine to five job, they find that it wasn't really what they were searching for or hoping for. A bad life event happens to them, and they got to make a choice. Am I going like, to let life kick me around or am I going to finally take control? Am I going to finally seek out the freedom that I know I deserve? That, that's the name I think of the game here is being willing to take the risk, being willing to be hungry and to be filled with that and to actually take lots of action towards your goal. That is what determines the winners from the losers. It can be hard. I understand. It can be difficult to surround yourself with positive forces when your mom or your dad or your significant other, your friends are not just in the same mindset as you. They don't understand what you're trying to do with your life or they don't have the kind of advice that you're seeking. That's my goal with this podcast. And in addition, if you resonate with what I've said about living a life of freedom, I think you got to surround yourself with a mission, man. You got to be surrounding yourself every day with positivity and positive messages. And that's why I put together um, basically some new merch for you guys so that you can continue to embody this message every day. When you look into the mirror, you can be reminded of this. This is your goal. You're living a life of freedom. You're trying to get that freedom. That's what everything, all the hard work is for. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about the merch that I have for you, I got some cool hats and some snapbacks and some tank tops and stuff, um, you can go to salvadorbrigman.com slash merch. That link is S-A-L-V-A-D-O-R-B-R-I-G-G.com slash merch. Just go there. You can see a little bit about um, some of the designs that I got going on there. If you really do want to embody this mission, I invite you to grab um, one of the you know bits of apparel that I got there. So that way, every time you wake up, 
you can be reminded of this mission whenever you look into the mirror you can be reminded when you're going to work and you feel really tired at the end of the day you can be reminded and sort of filled with a little bit of that inspiration and you can continue to work for an extra two hours after work or three hours on your dream on your side hustle and one day finally live a life of freedom without further ado Let's get into today's podcast episode. Hey guys, welcome back to the Life of Freedom podcast. Today we are privileged to speak with two travelers and two people that are following their dreams. They're from the site Follow Your Detour and also the Nomad Collab. And um, this couple has found a way to sort of hack their life in that they can travel, they can have really cool experiences, and they can also make money while doing it. So with today's episode, I want to get into how that is possible and also how you can unlock more freedom for your life. Dan and Lindsay, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. We're so excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. So if we could get started, maybe you could just tell the listeners a little bit about your story and kind of how you got interested in this like nomad lifestyle. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of did like a lot of folks, you know, and we're not necessarily living this nomadic lifestyle just a few years ago. Um, We always like to travel. But we sort of saw travel as just something that you could do, you know, during your time off from work. And so we were doing the typical American dream. We went to college. We graduated with lots of debt. We then bought a house. So we were even in even more debt um, and really trying to live that suburban American dream. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, we actually found out that we couldn't have kids, um, biological children together. And so that kind of sent us into this tailspin, this life detour, as we call it. Um, And we kind of had an identity crisis there for a little bit to try and figure out what we wanted to do next and how we wanted to move forward. And um, the good news is we started to see this bad news as a detour rather than a dead end. And that sort of led us to this idea that, you know, we love traveling. Why not try and do that and pursue that for a lifestyle? And so that, you know, a long story short, we sort of took a big leap and moved across the country. And that was um, you know, exciting. And then we ended up getting the idea to travel and live in an RV full time. So we've been doing that for about two and a half years now. So abbreviated version, but I'll let who, Lindsay add. Who had the idea first, just out of curiosity? <laughs> I did actually, which is so funny because I grew up not traveling at all. I was very much in a little bubble in my hometown with my family, didn't like to leave um, or go too far from them. And so When Dan proposed to me, it was funny because he kind of gave me an ultimatum that I would adventure with him because he had studied abroad and traveled a bit more growing up. And um, I think that concerned him that I wasn't going to leave our hometown. And so um, I the first thing we did really after we got married was we booked one way tickets to Costa Rica Mm. and just kind of went for it. And we were I was in sort of a transition with my job at the time. I was um, going to school to be a teacher and I was just kind of waiting for this position. And so Dan quit his job and we, I decided, okay, like, let's, let's do it. We got married. I'll adventure with you. So let's go to Costa Rica. And we stayed there, lived there, worked there for four months. And honestly, that just changed me. And that's when I, you know, the travel bug got me and Ever since then, I I longed for that adventure again, and so that's pretty insane. I, yeah, that, that's that's yeah. like incredible, and it's a huge jump too. If you've never done a lot of traveling before, and you know, just getting out of your hometown, what did your what did your like friends and family think? Just out of curiosity, I know that they thought we were pretty crazy, but and we were pretty young to get married too when we did, and um. It was Honestly, def- yeah. it, it was one of those things that just kind of happened, and I don't think anyone really had time to think much about it. <laughs> it's just kind of, I don't know. I think a lot of people said, well, do it do it now while you can, and they, they thought we would go, and then we would come back, and things would be back to normal, and we would, you know, it was sort of like our little extended honeymoon, and I don't think anybody really anticipated it really laying the foundation for full-time adventure in our marriage, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I'd agree. I think, I think a lot of people just kind of, I I would honestly, I'd say a lot of our family and friends didn't even know where Costa Rica was. So um, (laughs) they probably were 
<laughs> Although, you know, didn't really know what to expect. And I, and I have to give Lindsay a lot of credit because, you know, I had backpacked through South America and done a, done a few things similar before. And, you know, for her first travel experience, we went and we lived in Costa Rica and didn't have a car and didn't have cell phones and had to take buses everywhere. And, you know, it was kind of before the before the internet really not before the internet but before we had access to the internet in a different mm-hmm. country and so it was it was pretty um intense but it was a wonderful experience and like she said it really laid the foundation for where we ended up you know now which was, you know it's full-time traveling so how, and how, how, how long ago was that by the way when you first you know did that first trip to costa rica it was 10 years ago we're coming up on our 10 year wedding anniversary so, so you got that's well first of all congratulations um Thank but you. You guys basically, you both had traditional jobs, you know, I'd say like a nine to five sort of idea of a job. You know, you came from small towns, it seems like you had this one vision for your life. Immediately something happens, which changes all of that. Can you paint a picture for the listeners about your life now? Like, what does your life look like now? Our life now is, we emphasize travel so much. We know that it makes us better people. It connects us closer together in our marriage. Um, we just, we, yeah. And I think, I mean, I would say like our life now is, is much more intentional than it ever was Mm -hmm. before. I, looking back, the Costa Rica experience was a adventure. It was, you know, something that didn't have a lot of sustainability to it. We were going, we were going to adventure and then we came home and then, you know, we started working that American dream and, 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 you know, getting a house and all that stuff. And we still traveled during that time. You know, we went, to Thailand and Europe several times, but like I mentioned, it was it was more on summer break or when we had a little bit of PTO that we could use. And looking back, it seemed like life was happening to us in a lot of ways. Um, and now I I really believe the way that we're orchestrating and trying to build our life now, it's just so much more intentional. You know, we we really try to spend the days doing what we want to do or doing what we have to do. You know what I mean? Like it's it's more intentional, and I guess that's ultimately what. A life, you know, a life of freedom is all about is spending time doing the things that you want to do when you want to do them. Yeah. Totally, yeah. I mean, I think it sounds awesome, and being able to feel like you're at the cause rather than the effect. I think that's something that a lot of people crave out there. I know that I have in my own life. I think the biggest question mark though is like, well, it's awesome. Like you're young, you're experiencing things, you're going and traveling, having new incredible, um, you know, adventures with people. But it's like when it comes to being an adult about it, how do you actually finance this? Like, how do you actually? you know, earn an income from abroad? How do you do this, you know, from your laptop or however you guys bring in income? I'd love to learn a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, it's hard, you know, and it takes a lot of time, energy and effort. And when we first hit the road in our RV, we we were very blessed that I worked a hundred percent remote job. So that sort of gave us that runway um, where we still had a solid income and benefits and, you know, made sure we were taking care of our adult responsibilities um, you know, and Lindsay, though, she was a kindergarten teacher. So for her, she had to completely transition to mm-hmm. something entirely new if she was going to earn any income. And so, you know, we launched our blog um, and that's been a, a, an income driver through our social media channels. We've had the opportunity to do a lot of partnerships with different brands. You know, we just spent last weekend working with Barefoot Wine um, and going to a music festival. And so, you know, we've had some really great opportunities to bring in income. We, I still do some con- contracting and consulting work on the side. Lindsay published her book. So it's sort of a myriad of things, really, mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, a lot of different things. We actually just launched another business called Nomad Cloud, which you mentioned earlier, um, which is a community for traveling couples. So our motto is kind of just keep, keep as many income streams, you mm-hmm. know, or try to build as many income streams as you can. But I think for me, the biggest first step was just like this mindset shift and knowing that it is possible. And I think we can get so stuck in what society tells us and what people tell us and what we believe is like there's one way to do life and just shifting that. And really, I mean, it took just some time to believe that it was possible and that we could get we could make life the way we want it to be, you know, and so. It was a big transition for me when I quit teaching. I had no idea what skills I had outside of teaching, um, but I was willing to just kind of try different things. And I I volunteered my time and did some free work. I worked as a virtual assistant. I started doing freelance writing. I just kind of dipped my toes in different areas to see what kind of took off. And that's when 
I networked with a lot of other travel bloggers, which was huge. And um, we've since even planned a RV um, online summit for RVers, just helping people That's get into cool. that lifestyle. Yeah. Um, then my book. And so, yeah, it's just allowed me to just try a whole bunch of different things and, and see see what works. So what I, what I love about that, Lindsay, is that you're actually still doing what it is you were great at, which is your teaching, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. You're putting out books and content and with the blog and even the community, a lot of it's, I think, based in teaching from what I'm hearing. Yeah, absolutely. I think of that often too. And, um, yeah. And whether you apply the skills that you have or learn new ones, there's just, there's always a way to make it happen. And if you want it bad enough, you'll figure it out and you'll, you'll do what it takes. So what, what kind of work do you do, Dan? So, you know, I, I obviously help out with the, the website and all of that stuff, but my professional background is in software consulting. So um, I still do some of that um, about 10 to 15 hours a week with my old company. So that, that definitely is an income source. And um, yeah. So again, there's no, there's a lot of gray area. It's not as black as black and white as we originally thought. And so when he quit his full-time job, we were able to find a happy medium where he could have a little bit more freedom, but still, um, you know, a couple hours here and there for stability. And mm-hmm. so there's no formula, you know, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Um, one that's... of the, one of the things you said earlier was that you guys really get to spend the time doing what you're passionate about or what matters yeah. to you. Um, what is that? You know, is it the, obviously the traveling makes, makes up a part of that, but I'm sure there are other things that you're, you're spending your time doing here. Yeah, I mean, the travel is a huge part of it. Living in the RV has been, um, <clears throat> you know, a, a great opportunity to see a ton. You know, I mean, we have we have been coast to coast, north, south, you know, and, and we've seen so much of the U.S. And it's been a really great opportunity to do something that we honestly hadn't really thought that much about U.S. travel. So the last two and a half years, honestly, have been really great. We've gone into Canada um, but we also do a lot of other things. We love spending time with our family and building this lifestyle allows us to come home, you know, when we want to come home and, you know, spend a couple months for the holidays or, or, you know, my mom has had some health issues. So to be here for her, um, so that flexibility is huge for us. Um, we love hiking and spending time with our animals. You know, we got two dogs, so that's awesome. Uh, well, and we love to do. the coolest thing about it all is that we've been able to, somehow inspire other people to do the same. And we've been so, this journey for us has been so powerful and this whole concept behind follow your detour. And sometimes we forget how even just posting on Instagram and the little things that we do that we think we're just kind of, you know, doing for the blog is really inspiring people. And like we ran into this girl in Costco the other day that was so excited to meet us that she followed us on Instagram. And she said, you guys inspired me to hop in my car and go on an adventure with just my dog. And we went up to the grand Tetons and Yellowstone. And I wow. just, everything you guys do is like, I want to, I want to do too. And it's just so fun to follow. And it's just little moments like that or emails that I get from my book that make it all worthwhile and that are just sharing our story and our struggles and our, you know, passion with traveling and trying to make this life of freedom work is helping other people know that they can do the same. And that's been just such a blessing to us. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing too, is that you guys are experiencing this together and it's sort of like you're growing together and you're learning and you know, all the new stuff that you're tackling and you're learning different skill sets. And it's really, I think inspiring from that angle as well, that you're forming this partnership and like growing um, together rather than letting this event divide you in any kind of way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been, excuse me, sorry. It's been really cool. And, you know, when we decided to move into an RV, a lot of the people that we tell or would talk to about that would always say things like, well, aren't you going to get sick of each other? Oh, I would kill my spouse if I was stuck together, you know, and we never really had that concern. We've always spent a lot of time together, but living in the RV made our relationship even stronger. You know, we learned how to problem solve together. We learned how to set a vision together for our relationship and for our life, which was something that we were not doing before that, right? She was a teacher and she had aspirations and I was in the corporate world and doing my thing. And and our paths didn't cross. Like we hadn't taken the time to really map out what our vision 
for life as a couple was. And so the last two years, like she said, shifting our mindset, traveling together, solving different problems, it's brought us closer in, in remarkable ways. And I, and I love that. And I feel that is such a powerful thing for couples when they decide to embark on like a freedom lifestyle and a yeah, travel lifestyle because you, you have to lean on each other so hard. And I, so we always sort of recommend, you know, traveling together as a, you know, a, lit, a litmus test for a relationship and a good way to build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think is difficult, you know, I have a lot of friends that are looking to quit their job. You know, they want They have something on the side that they're working on. But they're like, man, I really want to go full time on this. But there's that huge element of fear. And even just building my own business, there's always that point in time, like three months in, four months in, you're like, man, I don't know if I can get through this. Like, I don't know how to push forward. How did you guys find the, the courage to really push forward some of those difficult times in the beginning? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is just once you make one big leap, the others get a little bit easier and you realize how a lot of your fears are just kind of things that you're telling yourself that never actually come to fruition. So um, that, at least for us, like just – jumping in an RV and not knowing what we were doing and seeing how rewarding that was and how it wasn't as scary as we thought that first initial leap just helped us to take yeah. more and more as we went on. Um, but yeah. also we, we've kind of just learned to know that failure is a part of it and we weren't so afraid of failure. Um, we felt like failure was just a step closer to where we needed to get. And the more times we can fail, the the sooner and the quicker we're going to get to the solution and the big thing that actually works. So um, not being afraid of that, not worrying about other people, what they think, because typically they end up admiring you for being, for having the courage to take those risks. They don't, they're not looking at your failures. They're looking at, you know, your risk taking. So and that's what I was going to comment on too, is, you know, it, it's not, when you're at that four month mark or you're, you're wanting to take that leap, I think it's really important to realize that like Lindsay said, failure is, is not a bad thing. You know, it's hard and we struggle with it. Like we, we have to overcome fear every day too. It's not like we're, we've mastered this. We're still learning and doing our best. Um, and, but what we, but what we do know from the books we read and just from our own personal experiences, like failure is actually a good thing. And so, you know, having the courage to take, that leap and start your own business or quit your job, you know, the outcome may not be exactly what you wanted, but if you just have the right mindset, you will move forward regardless, you know, and I think that's really powerful to know ahead of time. And then I always think too, you know, like if you have the skills to get a job today, right, you're employed or whatever, and you want to launch into this side business, Perhaps it doesn't work out, and that that may be the case, and perhaps you do end up going back to the corporate world. But even still, like that's not uh, that's not that you know is it, that's not the worst thing that can happen, right? So if you have the skills today to get hired, you can have the skills tomorrow to get hired, and you know that helped. That certainly helped me at yeah. least, like launch, you know, and, and take that risk. I think a lot of the t uh, just to add on to that, I think a lot of the times in difficult moments in our life, we tend to sort of circle back to our faith. And that doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, Catholicism or, you know, it could be spirituality. It could be anything, really, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, did that play any role in your ability to get through this event and to also, you know, kind of surrender almost to this lifestyle? Absolutely. Um, we both have very deep faith. And so um, that, that, in my opinion, was just the number one thing is knowing that there's a greater plan and that we won't mess it up even if we make little wrong decisions along the way. Um, and I, we just held strong to the fact that we knew we would regret it if we didn't go for it. And um, again, like once you take that first step, it's funny how things start to fall into place and you just have to hold on to that faith that it's going to work out one way or another. And it might be a really long journey and full of obstacles, but you'll get there and then you, you have this point where you look back and everything starts to to make sense of why you went through the struggles you did and, and how it brought you to where you are now. Yeah, I love that one Steve Jobs quote that says you can't connect the dots going forward. It's always you look back and you can connect the dots. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of, it's kind of crazy how that works. Uh-huh, it is. Um, when, when you're sort of doing this, I think that 
you know, there, there are a lot of things here we, we can talk about in terms of like the, the practicals of, of setting up a business and all these things. But one of the things that isn't talked about so much is your ability to kind of like believe that this is possible. And I think that comes a lot from looking at other people that are doing it, reading up on blogs, you know, listening to podcasts like this one. Um, were there any sources that you guys were studying to kind of forward more quickly with your mission here? Yeah, we just like you said, we started looking for other young couples. When we first started our being, we just looked for other young couples in our age range that were doing it, that were making it work and figuring out what they were doing. Um, and that did give us a lot of confidence to move forward. And we still do that. We try to network with people that are, that are doing it and, and team up with people and don't look at people as competition. Look at them, you know, as a great way to partner and, and as mentors and, um, that helped us tremendously. What else would you say? I mean, there's obviously some thought leaders in the space, you know, for uh, location independent lifestyles that we've read their books, Tim Ferriss, you know, Pat Flynn, things like that, that we subscribe to and we and we listen to because they're so big on mindset and, you know, and they obviously get practical tips on on how to make some of this happen. But for us, I think like like you mentioned, it was really more of an inspiration piece. It was when we could get over the fact, like when we could get over our own fear, the biggest thing that we kept saying was, well, if that person can do it, then why can't I, you know, like instead of looking at that person and saying, I could never do what they're doing. Cause that's what we used to say, or that's what a lot of people instinctively feel is they feel insecure and they say, Oh, I can never do that. But if you could just like for a second, calm yourself and say, if that person is doing it, so could I, then you can do it. Like it, it may not look exactly like what that person's doing. In fact, it won't look exactly like that, but it helped us tremendously just to kind of look on Instagram, listen to blogs, listen, you know, pod or blogs that are earning lots of income. It's like, wow, this is, this is, this is achievable. Mm -hmm. And so um, well, and it's important to surround yourself with people that believe that because a lot of the people you're with right now are likely you know, holding you back or whether they're intentionally doing it or not. And so you have to find that network of people who understand and who are going to encourage you through the process. Yeah, totally. Um, I remember distinctly when I was younger. Um, I mean, I love, I mean, I love my family. I love my uncle. And one time he told me, you know, I just started my blog. He's like, you definitely, you know, you need to think about getting a real job because you're never going to be a full-time blogger. And like a year after that, I became a full time blogger, and I was like, "What? Like that's insane!" Like because I'd always looked up to him for inspiration and stuff in my life. And what I realized is, while your family is incredible for those types of things, when it comes to business, that's not always the case. Or when it comes Absolutely. to things you're trying to achieve like that, that's not always the case. Um, yeah. One of, one of the technical questions I had for you here was, man, you guys were able to pay off a hundred k in debt and also save twenty five k. Like, how did you do that? That's that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it wasn't like rocket science, I guess. It was, you know, we went to Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University at our church, and we just sort of subscribed to that cutting back and, and applying all of that extra money towards your debt. And so we got really, really serious about paying off our debt. Um, we started budgeting religiously, which was a transformational experience in our in our relationship you know um, a lot of people think budgeting is a restrictive mm -hmm. exercise but what we came to find out it was actually quite liberating for us we no longer had to be afraid or, or have anxiety about spending money because we had already accounted for it in our budget mm -hmm. um, and yeah we just we just honestly set on a course to 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 pay off our debt and then we had some windfalls as well. You know, I got some money from uh, one of my relatives passing away and we sold our house. Um, we got very fortunate and sold our house. And, and instead of taking that money and traveling, which is what we wanted to do, or buying a different house, we actually just invested that money to pay off our debt. And so... Mm -hmm. I think like, that frees you up so much because having debt of any kind, whether that's a mortgage or student loans or credit card debt, that really just mm -hmm. knocks away the freedom in your life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And every purchase we make now, we just, we think about that, you know, how can we make sure, how can we buy a, a car in cash rather than finance it or little steps like that can, can go a long way and just making you feel more free and more able to make big risks or take big risks because the money's not holding you back. So yeah. it's 
And then anxiety. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I'd love to ask you guys a little bit about like what, what you can offer here for the audience. Um, I know you have a lot of different stuff you're doing. You have books, you have courses, you have this new community. Um, you know, we have a little bit of time here. What would you like to talk about in terms of ways you can help the community um, go from maybe being on the edge there, wanting to travel more, wanting to have their own business, but they haven't yet taken that leap or they feel like they're kind of lost and frustrated right now? How can you help them? Yeah, well, we do have a little of everything. <laughs> so, um, you know, in the early stages, if you're just looking for a little inspiration and wanting to know more about our story, I would definitely recommend reading my book, Follow Your Detour. And um, just just like you said, to kind of hear how, how we've made it work um, and get a little dose of inspiration. And then um, if anyone out there is really ready to start learning how to make it happen, we would highly recommend our membership community for couples. And it, we allow singles too, but a membership comes with two profiles. So you can always bring a friend or family member. Um, but it's called nomadcollab.com. And it's just a way for people, like-minded couples to come together and build this lifestyle together and learn from one another and collaborate on projects, whether that's starting a business or just, you know, using each other's skills to help one another out. Um, we have weekly virtual events where we can connect with one another and build relationships. Um, and that community that we talked about, it's so critical. Um, yeah. And then I mentioned in November, I'm hosting an online summit for our viewers on how to get started and hit the road. So that would be a great resource if anyone's specifically looking for full-time RVing. Mm -hmm. And I think, and then of course our blog, yeah, we write yeah. a whole bunch of different stuff on inspiration on RVing on traveling both in the U S and abroad. So that's followyourdetour.com. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking here too. Like it's a $30 a month, which is like nothing. You get two profiles as basically two Netflix subscriptions. You know, you can cut back on some coffee and then you can be surrounded by all these online educational resources and tools and people that are just doing it. Like it yeah, seems yeah, like a pretty good investment. Um, and then I was looking at your, 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 uh, book here and one of the testimonials sort of that stood out to me, it says, this book has inspired me on so many levels. I laughed and cried, ultimately was left inspired. It's not often that a book truly reaches my soul. And somehow this book does. Um, sounds like it's a great resource. And looks like you guys have like over 80 good reviews there on Amazon. So congrats on all your work here. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for I, letting us share our journey. And just, thanks for what you're doing to inspire other people too. Cause yeah, absolutely. It's super cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast, sharing a bit of your story there. Also getting some, I think, pretty transparent and um, pretty authentic with, you know, how difficult it is to do this, but also that it's completely possible, you know, and mm -hmm. you've been able to build up these different revenue streams. There's no reason that anyone else out there um, can't do that and, and do the same. So Dan and Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show and we'll have to have you back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Life of Freedom podcast. My mission is to help you live with more freedom in your life. However that means for you, you know, whether more financial abundance, more ability to travel, earning more income so you don't have to worry about trading time for money. We get into really practical stuff because I am a nerd. But in addition, we also get into some other aspects of freedom, like living emotionally with freedom, freedom from negativity and negative emotions, all these different things we talk about on this podcast. I try to bring to you speakers and individuals who can show you what is possible for your life. All too often, I think we have a very narrow vision for our life, just quite simply because we're not surrounded with positive voices. We're not surrounded with positive examples or people just like us who look like us, who sound like us, who come from similar backgrounds, who are killing it. We just don't have access to that. And that is my goal with the show is to share with you some examples of people just like you didn't start with any money or you know have more of a nine to five kind of job they decide to quit that they decide to go out there to, to conquer the world literally and travel all around and they're able to do it they're able to set up their own life and it didn't take them years and years to be able to do that either you know they, they shared i think some really great tips on today's podcast dan and Lindsay, and i hope that you take this this episode to heart if you don't want to forget it like i know all the time we read books we listen to podcasts you know, we watch youtube videos and we're inspired for like a little bit of time and then we forget it 
we go back to our normal everyday routine. We don't change the habits that are necessary to make a radical shift in our life. If you want to be reminded every single day of this commitment to living with more freedom in your life, I invite you, man, go and check out my new merch store. Got a tons of great apparel there, snapback hats, also even products for women, um, you know, exercise clothes. Um, got a lot of cool stuff when it comes to tank tops and t-shirts and all of these, these items basically have emboldened mis- uh, messages which are designed to make you be reminded and to be inspired. When you forget why it is you're working hard after work on a side hustle, when you forget um, all of the, the difficulties and the obstacles that you're having to overcome, or even just being willing to take the leap at all and to, to confront the fear and the anxiety that you have of going out on your own, of doing things when you don't fully have all the answers, If you want some reassurance, you would want to be reminded of that vision that you have for yourself, that vision for a better future and a better life. I got some great merch for you, man. This is just even wearing, you know, a hat, um, looking in the mirror and when you wake up, um, being able to go out there to go out to eat with your friends and just be reminded of this message, I think is critical to always surround yourself with these messages of positivity that if you're a girl you can become a girl boss you can live life on your own terms if you're a guy you know you can live a life of freedom you can be an alpha you can be a warrior however you want to say it um go and check out this link salvadorbrigman.com slash merch that is s-a-l-v-a-d-o-r-b-r-i-b-r-i-g-g-m-a-n.com slash merch salvadorbrigman.com slash merch i'll include a link in the description of the youtube video and also within this podcast you can check out some of the apparel that i got for you to be reminded of this mission thank you so much for listening to this episode i do value your time so much and um if you want to go and check out some of the other episodes i got out there on different topics i think you might like them find them insightful and some content also that you maybe have never come across before online thank you for um spending some time here with me today and i will see you next time